What is going on everyone? This is Sonic Mix, aka Matthew here, and today I am here to give my review of WWE SummerSlam 2016. SummerSlam just happened just a few moments ago, and I gotta say, me personally, I was impressed. It was a very good show. That's all I gotta say. And I am here to give my review, which I have a list on what order it came in. Uh, I guess just really quick, there's a little game that I usually have with my friends. It's a prediction game on who we think is going to win. And just for kicks, uh, the friends that came along was two of my buddies and my cousin. Uh, my cousin scored 7 out of the 13 matches right. My one buddy, Keith, scored 7. My other buddy, Ken, scored 6. And I was the winner for tonight's prediction game, scoring 9 out of 13. So I, I, I think I was above 70-ish percent, if that seems about right. There's a lot to cover here. 13 to be exact. Woo! This is going to be a long one, so please bear with me here. I don't know if you can hear that airplane going by my house. Anywho, let's get right into the lineup here. So... In the kickoff side of things, the kickoff kicked off with American Alpha, the Hype Bros, and the Usos versus Brizango, the Ascension, and the Va Villains in a 12-man tag team match, 6-on-6. Six six. This was alright. I wasn't really enthusiastic by it. Kind of slow in most parts. Picked up towards the end. There was a couple cool spots towards the end. You had the double power bomb, and then you had your your usually your traditional finishers, where every each and one gets a finisher towards the end. Uh, in the end, uh, Jason Jordan and Chad Gable hit the grand altitude. But before that, I think it was Jimmy Uso got the blind tag, and Chad Gable got the cover. Then here comes Jimmy Uso with the splash. Uh, Chad Gable got out of the way really quick, and then they pick up the win, one, two, three. And then the look on Jason and Jordan's face was like, well, what just happened here? Why did this happen? Um, like I said, it was an alright match. I wasn't really enthusiastic by it, but it is the kickoff match, so I guess I really wasn't expecting too much. I gave it a two out of five. It was... I'm not saying it was not good. I think it was just... All right, at the least. Uh, up next, we had Sami Zayn and Neville versus the Dudley Boys. This was okay. I like some of the stuff that uh, Zayn and Neville were doing, where Zayn helped Neville elevate himself and did like this corkscrew moonsault, which I thought was really impressive. Uh, I like the stuff that Bubba Ray is doing, how he's talking trash, and he was uh, mocking... Uh, Sami Zayn with the, oh, uh, what was he mocking him with? I'm, I'm trying to remember. I think it was his theme song. I think that's what it was. He was mocking him with that one. Oh, no, no, it was the ole, 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 ole. That's, that was the mock that I was trying to think of. Uh, I believe there was a dive from Neville from the outside. And then towards the end, I believe uh, Bubba, Bubba Ray accidentally hit Diva and Diva got out of the ring. Uh, Bubba was checking by him, close to the turnbuckle, Sammy hit the Luma kick, and then Neville got the tag, hit the red arrow, and got the win, one, two, three. I just want to point out really quick, how does Neville not screw up on that? I have to give that man props for not screwing that up. That's very impressive of how he turns his body around and lands it beautifully, and the guy deserves a lot of credit for that. And really quick that I want to point out something here. I find I find it disappointing with Sami Zayn how he goes from being on the main card on Battleground and having a hell of a match with Kevin Owens to then all of a sudden, oh, we don't have nothing for you, so we're just going to throw you in this kickoff match. Didn't like that. I think the idea of having Zayn against Roman would have been the much better match, and they could have had the story where, like, Zayn feels like, he feels accomplished by beating Owens, but to really feel accomplished, he needs to beat 
the uh, the guy who is Roman Reigns to really feel accomplished. But that didn't happen. I gave it a 2.5 out of 5. But like I said, it was okay, but nothing out of this world great. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Up next was Cesaro versus Sheamus, the final kickoff match before the main card. Uh, Cesaro versus Sheamus in the best of seven series, this being the first series. Surprisingly enough, I thought this was a fine match. I thought both of these guys did very well. I thought the pace was actually pretty good for what it was worth. I think the match was maybe nine, ten minutes, so they gave him time, which I was happy about. And Sheamus picks up the win with the bro kick, which actually I wasn't too surprised because figuring that Cesaro got the win the past couple Rawls, it would make sense if Sheamus got the win here. So the heel gets the advantage going into the series. And I'm assuming we're going to be seeing series number two uh, tomorrow night on Raw. I give the match a 2.75 out of 5. It was, like I said, it was a fine match for a kickoff match, that's for sure. Then we get onward to the main card, which I got this in order, obviously. Oh, really quick, though, before I get into the main card, I want to give props to WWE for actually putting in the effort for actually making a really cool kick-ass stage kind of felt like a mini WrestleMania stage from the way I looked at it. And then the turnbuckles on the corners of the ring, very interesting. And with the um, the projector or the TV monitor thing, I don't know what you, I don't know I don't know what you want to call it. But the thing on the sides of the turnbuckle, I thought that was really cool. And this is kind of like the new gig. Uh, maybe not for all the pay-per-views, but maybe for like the big pay-per-views. If they go along with that, I think it'd be I think it's a nice touch to have. But good stage. I thought the stage was cool, felt like a mini WrestleMania, and the new turnbuckles I thought was really interesting. Just wanted to point that out. But the show kicked off with the main card. Uh, Enzo Amore and Big Kaz versus Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens. This was a really Really good tag team match, and what a way to kick off this match. Both of these guys were very good. Kevin Owens doing his mocking of Enzo Amore was very funny, very entertaining. I'm actually really liking this team of Jericho and Owens. This is a very, very good formula that these two are having together. Uh, there was one spot, actually, where, where Big Cass was throwing Enzo out of the ring, and I don't know what happened, but it looked like maybe he didn't get too much air, and it almost looked like Enzo was going about to kill himself, but thankfully the guy's card on you was fine and all that. Uh, I really like the ending, though, where uh, Kevin Owens throws Enzo off the rope. He goes with a pop of power bomb, but then it gets but then it goes into the code breaker, which I thought was a really nice combo right there. So the pop-up code breaker. I think that's what we're going to call it from here on in. Uh, Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho pick up the win. I was actually wrong, because I actually said Enzo and Kaz was going to win. But I think on one hand, I think it was good that Jericho and Owens did win, just to kind of keep their tag team going together. So I, I think it was a good idea for, for them to win. Uh, I give the match a 3.75 out of 5. I know that might be a little bit too high, but I really enjoyed this match. I thought it was good all the way. Uh, the next the next match, which surprised me, uh, Sasha Banks versus Charlotte for the WWE Women's Championship. I thought this was a good match. Uh, maybe not as good as the Raw match that they had after the brand split, but for a women's match, this was definitely a very good match nonetheless. Uh, there was a scary incident, though. Uh, it was... There was an incident where uh, Charlotte was on the turnbuckle with Sasha, and she had Sasha to where it looked like she was going to go for a, a side slam off the turnbuckle, but then apparently Sa uh, Charlotte must have had lost her grip or Sasha slipped, and she went basically down and kind of landed her head 
on the mat. It looked very brutal, but she seemed to be all right. She was selling the back injury, but she seemed to be fine. And then there was another little botch area where uh, Charlotte was going for the glory special and Sasha slipped, and then they, they redid that spot again. So there was a couple mishaps that kind of hurted the match, but the reversing from Sasha into the bank statements were really good. And surprisingly, at the end of this match, Sasha gets the bank statement. Charlotte rolls over and gets the pinfall win on Sasha Banks. Very shocked. I don't know why Sasha lost after her big win on Raw, but unless, if I'm predicting this now, unless this is going to lead to, like, say, maybe a Charlotte against Bailey, seeing that Bailey lost at NXT, this would make sense in a way. I don't know. Uh, but Charlotte gets the win. I give the match... I'll be generous. I'll give it a 2.5. I was thinking about giving it a 3.25, but the match was still pretty freaking good. So I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Uh, the third match was The Miz versus Apollo Crews for the Intercontinental Championship. This was actually a solid match. I was... Very entertained by this. Apollo Crews shows that he is a very athletic guy for being a big man. And I thought there was a good pace to it. Very well balanced. No one didn't seem to be very dominant over the other. Apollo Crews doing his flips and doing his stunts. And at the end, Maurice kind of distracts Crews. Miz hits the skull crushing finale and gets the win one, two, three. I kind of I, I expected the Miz was going to win this match, but in the back of my head I did think maybe Cruz, but I don't think Cruz is not quite ready yet for that title run. Maybe they may give it to Kalisto after his rivalry with Baron Corbin, which I have no idea what the hell is going on with that rivalry. In the end, I give Cruz and the Miz. I give it a solid three. Like I said, I thought the match was fine. Maybe a little bit too high, but it had a good pace. The crowd was kind of into it, but not really at the same time. But it was it was fine. That's all I'm gonna say. It was fine. Also, props to the crowd to the crowd because as I've always heard this before, it's the crowd. Sometimes the crowd, if they're really into the match, they can make the match good as well. And the crowd was really red hot for most of these matches here. Uh, number four was it's on my list here somewhere number four john cena versus aj styles if aj styles is the phenomenal one this was definitely a phenomenal match very close near fall wins you almost thought at one hand cena was gonna win then you thought aj styles was gonna win very close encounter match very good reversal very good Oh my god, I mean, there's so much in this match here. I mean, I can't quite remember what everything happened, because I actually don't take notes or anything like that. I try to I try to remember it as I'm playing along here. But uh, Cena did kind of like this uh, burning hammer into something else. I forgot what it was. He did the flip where AJ Styles is holding him from the back, and then Cena kind of elevates himself and then flips him over. And then the phenomenal form. I think it was no, no, the an attempt for the phenomenal form into the STF, and then the STF to the calf crusher, and then the calf crusher back to the STF. Really good stuff here. And then towards the end, where Cena hit the AA from the turnbuckle, you thought right away, oh, it's over. This is it. And AJ Styles by like this, like that that much, not by too much, kicks out. Crowd went nuts. The crowd was super, super red hot for this match. And I love the end where Styles hit the Styles Clash, then hit the Phenomenal Forearm, and he pinned Cena clean. There was no club, no Gallows or Anderson, nothing. He beat him fair and square, and that is what I like to see. Phenomenal match. I give this match a 4.75 out of 5. This was the match of the night. No doubt about it.
And kudos and props to AJ and Cena for putting on one hell of a match. Uh, up next, number five. Oh, and also, I kind of want to mention something really quick. Uh, in the back, there was two backstage segments. There was the uh, John Stewart, Nick Foley, Stephanie McMahon, New Day segment. It was nothing. It was easily skippable. But the one backstage I liked, you had the club, and then AJ appeared, and then Finn Balor appeared, and the crowd went nuts because obviously that's Bullet Club spinning out out of your mind. Really good moment right there. Really cool moment. I just wanted to bring that up really quick. Uh, number five, uh, we had the New Day versus Gallows and Anderson for the tag team titles. Uh, John Stewart actually introduced the New Day. Uh, people chanted, "What? New Way doesn't care about John Stewart," which they have the right to. Uh, on to the match itself. The match was kind of a letdown. It was kind of slow for the most part. Uh, what I didn't like about this match. Particularly was the interference by Jon Stewart and then the DQ in the end. I wish it would have been a victory. Maybe like a screwy victory would have been a little bit better, but it was just a flat out DQ. Wasn't into this match. I don't think, I think most people was not very satisfied of how the outcome of the match ended. At least I wasn't very satisfied with it. In the end, this, I think this was probably, not counting the kickoff. This was probably the weak, the weaker part of the tag team for the main card. So, I give this, I give it a two point five. I know that may sound a little harsh, but just the the, the John Stewart stuff and then the DQ in the end, I think, really hurt the match more more than it should have never had hurt it. Uh, number six. Uh, Dean Ambrose versus Dolph Ziggler for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I thought the match was solid, but at the same time, this was just a very amateur type style match. The crowd was actually not into it. They were pretty silent for the most part. Not a lot of crazy spots. Once again, as I said, it was just kind of like your average Joe type wrestling match. There was no believability, at least in my opinion, there was no believability that Ziggler was going to pull off the win here. Because I strongly thought Ambrose was going to win this match. And thus he did. The finish of the match was basically, they were on the turnbuckle. Ziggler was going to go for something, and Ambrose landed on his two feet, got him in the dirty deeds, hit the dirty deeds, and got the one, two, three. Like I said, it was a fine, solid match. Solid three out of five, but really nothing to it. And that's like a high three, at least for being just a regular straight-up match. Uh, up next, number seven was Carmella, Becky, and Naomi versus Natalia and Alexa Bliss. Now, Eva Marie's entrance did hit, and the, uh, the excuse this time was the hostile crowd and that she needed to get away for a vacation. And they didn't mention the wellness policy, because once again, even Marie suspended. But there was a replacement with Nikki Bella. The returning Nikki Bella after being out since January, from what they said with her, with that neck injury that she had back in January. This was your typical woman's match. Like I said, it was, it was kind of whatever. It was... It was like, eh, that's all right, but eh, it could be better. This match, uh, Nikki Bella picks up the win with the, what does she call that finisher? The back ratcher? I actually forgot what she calls it. Uh, but I guess that's why, I, that kind of tells you that I really didn't care about this match, because this match was just kind of eh to me. Uh, this match gets a, a star and... A star in three quarters, and that may be being a little too generous there, but like I said, it was kind of eh, but it was, okay, I guess that's okay, but let's just move on. The Rack Attack, that's what it's called. That's that's Nikki Bella's signature finisher, the Rack Attack, now that I remember. Uh, number eight on the main card itself. Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor to crown the first ever Universal Champion. I thought this was a very good match. 
Although with the crowd, which this part this part here didn't make sense. The crowd was chanting Balor sucks, and then they were doing the New Day club with Balor sucks, Balor sucks. It really confused me. I know I I've heard the stories that a lot of people don't like Balor, which I don't get why. I think his demon persona is really super cool, and it really draws his inner character out. Maybe, sure, his promo was not all that good, but he's a good wrestler, and him and Rollins had a really good match. There was a lot of good spots, the sling blade from Seth Rollins, how Rollins was getting in his face with Finn Balor, then the, um, where Rollins threw Balor over the barricade, and then Balor just kind of rised like a scary guy. You were expecting a machete, but there was no machete, of course, because this is PG. And Rollins went for the pedigree, Finn Balor kicked out. Balor went for the 1916, he kicked out. And then there was a good sequence towards the end. And then finally nailed him with the coup de gras. I think it took, was it two coup de gras or was it one? No, I think it was one coup de gras. Yes, it was only one coup de gras. And Balor gets the win, and he is the first ever Universal Champion. I give this match, although I do want to point out really quick, I strongly thought this was going to be a phenomenal match. So I think in a way I was a little disappointed because I will admit there were some slow points. And they kind of, it, it almost kind of felt like they were trying to drag out the match to try to make it seem better. But it didn't seem to work in that favor. But I think they could have a much better match. But either way, this was still a very good match regardless. I give this match a... Uh, I gave it a 4. A solid 4. Like I said, the stuff they pulled off was really good. The crowd chanting Balor sucked was kind of weird. But either way, the, it was still a great match to watch. And I would highly recommend seeing it. Up next, what was supposed to be a match, Rusev versus Roman Reigns for the U.S. Championship. This is an N.A. or a dud, as some people would call it. The match basically never got started. It was basically a brawl. Uh, Roman got the upper hand on Rusev, Rusev kind of, kind of got the upper hand on Roman, and then Roman hits him with the chair, he leaves, comes back, spears the crap out of Rusev, looks at him, then walks away. Uh, once again, this is an N.A., no contest, dud, whatever you want to call it. Let's move on to the main event. Main event itself, Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton in the main event to close out SummerSlam. This was solid. I liked some of the stuff they did outside, how Brock just threw Orton from the barricade and onto the table, which actually, Orton looked like he took that table, or going through that table, really hard, because it looked very vicious. The RKO on the table was really cool, although what's weird is that every time he hits the RKO, the table never breaks. I don't know why, but the table never breaks. And in the end... Which I think this was the smartest move to make. Brock Lesnar takes the gloves off. He starts rambling away on Randy. Starts giving him elbows. He actually gave... It looked like he gave Randy a very good gash. Uh, right above the forehead area. And he was bleeding. Like There was literally a pool of blood um, when you saw. The paramedics came in. The referees came in, they stopped the match, and they ruled it as a TKO. Brock wanted to, or Brock hammered Randy Orton a little bit more. P fans were chanting Goldberg, because I guess Goldberg was at some convention over in New York, so I think a lot of people thought Goldberg was going to come out. He never did. And Shane McMahon comes out, tries to stop Brock. Brock hits the F5 on Shane, and then Brock walks out. Once again, I think this was the smartest decision to make because, one, it makes Brock still look like a beast and still looks unstoppable. And secondly, Orton didn't get pinned or submitted. He basically bled until the referees had to stop the match. So there was no pinfall, no submission. I thought it was a good way to end the match. Once again, neither guy doesn't look weak. And it still makes both of the characters look strong. Once again, Brock looking strong as a beast for what he's capable of. 
and Randy Orton didn't get pinned or submitted, thus he still looks good. And I give this match a solid 3 out of 5. Overall, I thought SummerSlam was a really good show. I thought this was better than last year's. And in the end, I give this show... I give it an 8 point... Uh, what, do I, what, what do I feel? I think I'll give it an 8.75. Not quite a 9. Not quite there. And if you're going to ask me what do I think is better, NXT Brooklyn or this, that's a tough call. Six matches compared to 13 or 10 if you're only counting the main card, that's really tough to judge. Both of these shows, like I said, both of these shows were very good. I enjoyed them both. It was a good weekend for wrestling. I think, in all honesty, it's a tie. I think NXT Brooklyn was a very good show, great show. SummerSlam was a very, very good, great show. So I would say it's a tie. All right, that about wraps up my SummerSlam review for SummerSlam 2016. I hope you guys enjoy. Please do leave a like, please do leave a comment, and as always, follow me on Twitter. I will leave the description or the link down below. Twitter.com forward slash SonicMix1991. Until then, people, you have a good night, and I will see you. And yes, I will be giving the Raw, SmackDown, NXT, Cruiserweight Classic reviews as well. And I'm going to start getting into some video game reviews and predictions of like upcoming video games as well. Until then, you guys have a good night, and I will catch you later. Too sweet!